Hello, welcome to our afternoon movie, a film called In Like Flynn. Now, I don't know whether that phrase did come from around the time that Errol Flynn was such a popular star, but I, I've got a feeling it did, and it had a lot of meanings too, not the one that's used in this film, of course. In Like Flynn would be a recognisable film, even if you've never seen it, because it has as its base the same idea as the very popular romancing the stone. Although in this case, the leading role is played not by Kathleen Turner, but by this lovely lady, whose name is Jenny Seagrove, who was Bristol trained and uh, appeared for the BBC in a number of excellent productions. The Woman in White of Wilkie Collins was one, I remember. A Woman of Substance was certainly another that uh, gave her a big profile as far as television was concerned. She has since tried to make the break into international films and was most recently seen in an unfortunate film called The Guardian, in which she played some sort of tree devil, I think. Not uh, the sort of subject that would do anybody's career any good, and yet this actress is really top class. In this film today, she plays a woman writer who has a very successful macho character, and she unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately for the entertainment value of the film today, uh, decides to act in life in the way that her character that she's created would also act, and you can see the similarity here to Romancing the Stone. But it's Jenny Seagrave who I really think makes this very uh, entertaining indeed. She's a good actress, and uh, along with her in the film, uh, people like William Conrad and Robert Webber and Eddie Albert. I hope you enjoy In Like Flynn. <laughs>
Coastal watch. Coastal watch. We got a target moving north by northeast. He's all yours. How's your dog? Oh, he's fine. Tiger, not whale of the wounded wild cat. Everybody knows a wounded animal is far more deadly. But it's Flynn who gets half eaten, not the cat. Terry, a section head of action novels, it's my job to be creative. You are. It's my job to be creative. You are merely a researcher for Mr. Raymond. And quite frankly, I think this firm needs more direct contact with the man. He's an eccentric Fulton, and his lifestyle has already gotten you five best-selling novels in a row. Okay, he's an eccentric. All writers are eccentrics. But having you running off to all of his inaccessible Hi, haunts throughout the world is completely unacceptable. Hi. Hi. Well, that'll be between him and his new publishers, won't it? New publisher? 
What are you talking about? What he's going to say to you when he finds you changed the name in his book without asking him. Uh, I'm expecting his call any minute. I'll transfer it to your office. I'm not worried about selling him on changing a couple of words in the title. It's time I started putting my foot down. From now on, I am handling that man personally. Yep. Yeah. No, uh, tell Mr. Raymond that Miss McLean will no longer be working as his researcher and transfer this call to Fulton Rodmere. You have a lot to learn about diplomacy. Yep. No, Mother, I did not hang up on you. I thought it was someone else. I was not being rude to Mr. Raymond. No, I am not quitting. Look, I see you've already called four times this morning. What's urgent? I'm afraid I, I won't be able to make it. No, it's not that I'm not interested in marriage. I just don't have time to meet your friend's friend. Yeah, I know I just got back. I gotta go again. Mom, I gotta go. I love you. Hi. Transportation? This is Terry McLean. I need a ticket to Kingston. Yeah, I know you'll have to get an approval, but I'm sure you'll get it in about 30 seconds. Goodbye, Mr. Raymond. He called you back. Why didn't he call me? I knew he wouldn't. Why? He's very superstitious. Things were going so well, he didn't want to change anything. Thank God. Up till now, he said all good things must come to an end. He goes to Doubleday on Monday. All right, all right. It's Cry of the Crimson Tiger. Oh, it may be too late. He was hurt that you didn't think him capable of titling his own book. He's right. I don't know what I was thinking. You must call him back immediately. Won't do any good. His mind is made up. I change one word and he goes crazy. I told you, he's eccentric. Uh, now, if I were to meet him face to face... Immediately? Where is he? Jamaica. All the way to Jamaica? Well, he's onto something really interesting for his next book. Apparently, a number of XGIs missing in action are now turning up in the Caribbean. That does sound intriguing. How soon could you leave? Well... had been described in his novels as a cross between a soldier of fortune and Robin Hood. That was because he most enjoyed taking money from the wicked and keeping it for himself. For some reason, his flawless instincts had driven him to Jamaica, where a seemingly insignificant newspaper article had been filed under the byline of Beatty Woodstock. Finding Woodstock would turn out to be Flynn's first step into one of his most bizarre adventures. No, B.D. Woodstock is not on my staff. B.D. Woodstock is an American who drifted into this part of the world, and he's still drifting. He's a drifter. Well, you do business with him. You must know something more than that. A, I might know something more than that. B, I happen to like the guy a lot. And C, he's made it very clear to me on several occasions that he likes his personal life kept just like that, just personal. So I respect that. OK, so you buy an occasional piece from him to help keep him afloat. Why these two stories? OK, A, uh... I think Americans are wondering about what happened to these guys. Sure. B, can you type a little faster? And C, this is not the first inquiry I've had about this Tim Holden story. I had a call this morning from a Mrs. Holden, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Apparently, it's his widow. Did you get a number from the lady? Yes, I did, as a matter of fact. And if you are lucky enough to locate Mr. Woodstock, you might pass that on to him. Apparently, Mrs. Holden is on her way here by plane right now. How do I find this Betty Woodstock? A, no phone. B, no address. C. I think the last locating point was a, it was a slip number in Kingston Harbor. But that was a few days ago. The boat might be there, might not be there. Does this boat have a name? Yeah, it's actually quite cute. It's called Deadline. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, miss, may I ask what your interest is? I do research work for a novelist. I read. Daryl F. Raymond. Out on a limb with Jason Flynn? Uh-huh. You know, you just made my day. How's that? Well, I have had this feeling. 
with all these Vietnam items creeping up, that there's something very dark and very weird going on out there. And apparently Mr. Raymond feels the same way, which is why he sent you. He has me research a lot of blind items. Most of them don't go anywhere. Thanks again. A Lamborghini Countach raced to the end of Kingston Pier. Thank you. Keep the change, huh? The ravishing beauty emerged from the sleep machine and sought out the silhouette of the world-class sailing sloop that was home to Jason Flynn. The sounds of Terry's fashionable high heels echoed below the high-gloss teak deck. Betty Woodstock? Yeah, with your man. Within seconds, the world's most lusty adventurer swooped down out of the rigging, wearing a white silk shirt. Flynn's eyebrow raised at the sight of the young beauty. His eyes had already asked the question, and her body had replied with unmistakable clarity. She was his. Who are you? I'm here about your article in the New York Times. Is there, uh, some place we could talk? Got anything against fresh air? I was hoping I could buy you lunch. I have quite a few questions. I think you'd be wasting your money. We'll be happy to pay you for your time. All I know is what I gave in the newspaper. That's almost a great quote. Will Rogers had more talent. You sure? Do I look like a man on top of his profession? Maybe I can help the cause if you'd help me with some information. Man washed up on the beach. That's all I know. Hardly. Had been declared legally dead five years ago. Ah, there's got to be a story there. Why aren't you following it up? I saw the story that I thought was there. If I'm wrong, maybe that's why I'm out here scrounging out a living. What's it to you anyway? It's nothing to me, Mr. Woodstock. I wouldn't want to get in the way of a good scrounge. All right. Who am I to say no to an expensive meal, a fine cigar? I'm just warning you. I think you're wasting your money. This is it. I do research. For Daryl F. Raymond. Flynn books. Uh-huh. You must be getting hard up for source material. To hire me? I meant the story, not your research. You never know. Oh, I have a message from the API office in town. Uh, something about a Mrs. Holden wanting to see you? You waited until now to give me that? You said there was no story there. What's the message? The guy gave me a phone number. Thanks. Sure are in a hurry for a dead end story. I appreciate your concern for me, Mr. Woodstock. This isn't the first trip I've made since my husband disappeared. I've learned to cope quite well. Would you mind telling me how you found out about your husband? The Customs Bureau. Customs? It's because of the diamonds? It seems that unless claimed by somebody who can prove ownership, they belong to me. And no one's come forward to make a claim? No one. That's three quarters of a million dollars. You might not believe this, but I'd trade all of it just to find out what happened to Tim all these years. I believe you, and if I can be of any help, please let me know. But the possibility that your husband was involved in something illegal can't be ignored. That could mean that he has partners who will do anything to get the diamonds back. I'm a big fan of Mr. Raymond's novels. But the lid is on this case right now. Bad. You know how Mr. Raymond loves to make fun of undeserving bureaucrats who get in Flynn's way when he needs information. On the other hand, no one's going to hit the papers tomorrow anyway. Mrs. Holden has filed an official claim against the body and anything contained therein. Uh, hold it. Did this discussion just take a turn for the morbid? Everything here is morbid. This is the morgue. Sure. Well, what do you mean by everything contained in the body? Diamonds. Diamonds? I started my routine check of the deceased's pupils, and there it was, tip of the iceberg, eight carats. 
I guess it broke loose from one of the plastic bags he'd used to swallow the rest of the stones. Now, let's slow this down a bit. Tim Holden's body was filled with diamonds? Seventeen stones. I'm told it's worth three quarters of a million dollars. It's no wonder Mrs. Holden is flying all this way to personally claim the body and its contents. Thank you. You've been a great deal of help. I won't forget you. Jason Flynn jumped into a sleek sports car and sped away from the morgue. Three quarters of a million dollars was a tough snack to swallow. Flynn was onto something, and he knew he wouldn't be alone for long. I can't turn back, Mr. Woodstock. I've been wandering in darkness for so long that any clue to the truth behind my husband's 10-year absence is a beacon for me. Can you understand that? I do a little sailing. I've had to scramble back to home port on more than one occasion. My occasions lasted 12 years. I hope things change for you. Goodbye, and thank you for breakfast. arrived at the hotel. Very good, Colonel Hopper. Move with dispatch. I want to be able to leave that morning. <laughs> well, there is one problem. What is it? She had breakfast with Mr. Woodstock. Let's try to eliminate Mr. Woodstock. Follow that jeep. to go in there, miss. I know. But I am. I met a strange lady. She made me nervous. She took me in and gave me breakfast. She said, we come from a land down under. Women blow and men thunder. Great, Colonel. Just great. I look a little surprised. Where'd you come from? I'm just down here making contact with you and some of the other vets in the old group who seem to be doing very well down here. Well, got a couple of places, a few girls, nothing big. Don't minimize it, Frank. And all of this with really no leadership. Hey, I like things the way they are. I'm sure you do. I also know someone you'd like to meet. Yeah? We'll make it a little surprise. We'll have a reunion. My memories of the old days may not be as happy as yours. I got carved up pretty bad when the inspector generals came to investigate us for criminal activities involved. I almost got court martial. You got off, didn't you? Was it no accident? Yeah. Yeah, people were taken care of. Well, we just figured it. Was... What did you figure? We didn't know what to think. Only one person in Nam had that kind of juice, and he was dead. Tell me he's dead. Nobody beats a direct hit with napalm. Try it, try it, try it, try it. 
Okay, be calm. What would Flynn do? Okay. telling me how you knew how to do that, which... Revenge of the Angels. Revenge of the Angels? The Flynn book? Uh -huh. Oh, that was much closer. It gets closer. Let's get out of here. <laughs> you know, you're still technically a drowning victim. You should get your lungs checked at a hospital. I'm fine. Well, is there someone around nearby who can help you if you start hemorrhaging? Yeah. Who? Me. Will you at least tell me who the two men were that you were watching? Look, I'm not going to discuss my work. I'm not sure that I can trust you. Well, that seems pretty stingy to me for someone whose biggest problem right now might have been algae. Are you angry that a woman saved your life? I'm just not used to being dependent. It rattles my sensibilities. Well, maybe that's a good thing. One against three is not considered great odds where I come from. <coughs> the guy that washed ashore a few nights ago, 
He'd been a soldier in Vietnam, one of those that had been missing for 10 years. They suspect that he was involved in some sort of smuggling ring. They found a considerable fortune in diamonds on him. Uh-huh. What else do you know about him? Not a lot. He was a corporal working out of a procurement division for some zebra. Zebra? Senior master sergeants, the ones with the stripes up the arms. The same ones that were involved in the big scandal at the end of the war. Graft? Graft is like saying that the Mafia is a non-profit organization. That just begins to cover the subject. Is there some connection between all that and the soldier that washed ashore? If there is, I think you should pack your bags and get on the next plane out of here. I've done research for my boss in places well, the only help I could get was a fast-acting poison. Miss. Call me Terry. Terry. The boys that ran the show, that ran the gambling and the prostitution, the black market activities, they were known as the Khaki Syndicate. They make the brand name variety look like choir boys. Are you afraid? Yes. As a matter of fact, I am. Then I'll have to tough it out. You're my story. How many of those inventions in the Flynn books are yours? Why'd you say that? Because that was an incredible piece of thinking at the pool. Told you. It was one of Flynn's adventures. Uh, Revenge of the Angels. I read Revenge of the Angels. There's no drowning stun in that. Must have been one of his others. How many of his books have you worked on? All of them. I'm going to get some rest. Good night. Sleep well. There was a lot more to the story than even Flynn knew at this point. Something ugly was crawling up from some alien world. And Flynn knew only too well that demons he had not yet even encountered could hold the key to new and horrible dangers. Beauty who lay next to him, revealing the best body he had seen outside of a centerfold. He wouldn't be able to unravel his mystery without her. He'd need to rely on her keen wit every step of the way. Where are you going? Back to work. Uh huh? Back to work. I thought we were going to start pooling our resources. If they know me, they'll try again. Just stay back. I'll be glad to make some notes. Leave them behind in case they succeed. You know, you nearly died last night. I'd have thought you'd have trusted me enough now to open up about what's really going on. And then you'd be in as deep as I am. I'm not afraid. So what's the problem? It's personal. I go on my own. Then you're going to be bumping into me. If you don't want that to happen, at least tell me where you're going. To see Mrs. Holden. She could be in danger. My name is Colonel Harper. I served with your husband for a while in Nam. I'm investigating his reappearance. I've discovered some new facts, if you're still interested. For his son's sake and mine, I want to learn everything you can find out. Can you meet me at my office at the American Embassy this afternoon about 2 o'clock? Where is it located? Wait, wait a minute. Uh, better yet, why don't I send an embassy escort to pick you up at your hotel? We don't want anything to happen to you. I really appreciate this help, Colonel. Goodbye. All right. Marine dress uniforms, escort car. Be ready at 1 o'clock. Yes, sir. Hello. Terry, how was the flight? Great. I was wondering if you had any calls back on that check I asked you to run on Betty Woodstock. Yeah, I got it right here in front of me. Seems he uh, lost a younger brother, a chopper pilot, missing in action in Nam. Took it pretty hard. Dropped off the network camera crew, freelance, and then all but disappeared. Kind of a loser, huh? Well, why would you say that? Well, certainly not an overachiever. Look, I've got great news. I may be able to get my folks' beach house in Jersey. Uh-huh. Maybe we could uh, run out for a barbecue this weekend, let's say. Uh, I may not be back. Look, Raymond can't completely dominate your life. You're a person, Terry. Who knows if there's even a good story there? There's a good story, yeah. I'll be calling in, Fulton. 
Look, about the weekend, the barbecue, my mother may be dropping by. Terry? Terry? You're in the lobby. She'll trust you to take her anywhere. Hey, Jimmy, good you could come. Hey, hey who are you? <laughs> okay. Wait, what's this all about? Why don't I uh, let an old friend explain it to you? Who? Oh, that would be telling. <laughs> Nothing's changed, eh, kid? <laughs> Have I got a surprise for you? Hey, what is this here? I can't see a thing. Come on. We'll give the dark room, Jimmy. But I've got a doctor doing a little work on me here in Kingston. Wait a minute. Who, who is it? Come on, Jimmy. You were my right hand for two years. You don't remember who took care of you? Hey, Dominic. Your life. You didn't know. I swear I didn't know. I, uh, I lit candles for you. Must have helped, Jimmy. We're all back, all of us. It's going to be just like old times. We'll be working together again. Well, you know, things, things aren't the same as they were in the old days in Nam, Dominic. You know, uh, new guys are taking over now. We went to war for our country, Jimmy. Some of us died. We were in a place somewhere. I just want to hear that you'll give our proposal a chance. The others will decide for themselves. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, I'm always willing to listen to whatever you got to say. You know that. That's all I ask. But not here. I need to show you what we've got. You've never seen anything like it. It's bigger and better than in the old days. You'll have a lot of laughs. Laughs with laughs. I mean, we're, we're talking business, aren't we? Huh? Did I ever set up a business without laughs? <laughs> there were some good times, all right, that's for sure. They will be again. The party is this weekend. <laughs> sure, you know. Maybe we'll have a good time. Yeah. Uh, goodbye, Jimmy. Colonel Harper sent you? That's right, ma'am. We're to take you to customs. Special sections branch. Thank you very much. I really appreciate this help. It's our pleasure. Flynn always knew when he was on the wrong track because everyone left him alone. Therefore, it always made Flynn feel secure when he was being followed. The same guy had been hanging around for two days. He had to fit in someplace. But where? And how could Flynn find out? People were appearing and disappearing. Some had been thought dead for ten years. Others could be on their way to dying right now. Terry McLean. I do research for Manhattan Publishing. The uh, Jason Flynn books, to be exact. Hey, I love those books. <laughs> that Flynn guy, he's all aces. Hey, what can I do for you? I want to know what happens to a body that washes ashore filled with diamonds. <laughs> hey, listen, I know as much about that stuff as anybody else here. You know, you won't believe this, but as a matter of fact, we have a situation like that going on right now. I know. I read about it. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Sounds like wonderful material for a future Flynn novel. <laughs> well, could I speak to the officer in charge of the case? Oh, uh, well, he's in. But you won't believe the coincidence of this. He's waiting right now for the widow of the man who washed the shorter. <laughs> an appointment with the ranking CEO, Mr. Blum. Yes, sir. You are Mrs. Holden? If you step right this way, please. That's Mrs. Holden, the wife of the man you read about. She's come to claim the stones. Just like that? No proof of previous ownership? Here you go, man. Thank you. If the stones come in uncut, we presume smuggling. But if they come in cut, we just say that the property of the carrier is subject only to a duty tax. Yes, I It's not wise to stop, ma'am, if you don't know this woman. I'm working with Betty Woodstock. Oh, I tried to get in touch with him from the hotel, but he didn't leave any kind of message. Well, I can get a message to him. Uh, where are you going from here? Ma'am. It's all right. 
Well, I wouldn't know about my husband if it weren't for him. I'm going with these gentlemen to meet Colonel Harper at the U.S. Embassy. Uh, may I suggest you do not leave here until I can reach Beatty? The Colonel is expecting her, ma'am. They have an appointment. That's right, and he's been very kind. What is your Colonel's command? I'm not free to discuss that, miss. Neither is Mrs. Holden. Please, I think we should leave. I don't want to be rude, officer. Our orders are to interpret any attempt to delay us as a possible threat. If this lady chooses to meet us at the embassy, the colonel has the authority to do what he pleases. I do not. Please, I think we should leave. I'll try to reach Betty, and I'll follow you right over. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yes. It's Terry. You miss Mrs. Holden. I'm at customs. She was here with two soldiers. They just left for our embassy. To meet with whom? A Colonel Harper. Terry, stop her from getting in that car. Why? Because she left me a note saying that she was going to see this Colonel Harper. I called the embassy. They've never heard of him. <laughs> So you should. You've been following me for two days. Might as well save a little on the cab fare. Get after that car, fast. Look, I'm afraid there's some mistake. You I... want to know where I'm going, don't you? That's where I'm going. Come on, come on. I'll tell you the rest later. Kidnappers and murderers and maybe worse, a, a guy could take offense at it. What are you working on? That's confidential. Auto de car. I'd come on more than long. Uh, would you mind telling the officer that story you told me? Uh, what story? About the kidnappers and the woman who... It was cute. I could flash my badge, but there are leaks in all these foreign places, and I don't want to tip off the guy I'm here to nail. Makes sense to me. I'll go downtown with you and the officers. It'll give you a chance to confide in me. If I buy what I hear, I'll tell them my story and how I commandeered your car. Uh, have you ever considered going into politics? For uh, almost five years, while the war escalated from a few advisors to the bloodiest military action in United States history, it was my job to investigate one of the most powerful men involved in the war, our side or theirs. He 
bought, sold, stole, controlled almost every bullet, band-aid, and PX in Vietnam. And to enforce his control over this empire, he got a lot of young servicemen hooked on drugs. And when they got so dependent, they couldn't stand muster anymore. They went over the hill, became outlaws working directly for this crooked empire. Even the guys that eventually kicked their habits, they couldn't go home. They were facing Leavenworth for desertion. So they lied, stole, even murdered. In return, well, they lived a good life. Until the war ended? No. Until my investigation instigated a full-scale probe, and that was long before Saigon fell. Well, didn't that result in all kind of reforms? Yeah, we closed everything down. But we didn't get the warlord. He slipped through. I thought you said he was killed. That's what the army said. A freak accident. Uh, our own artillery destroyed him, the club, and all the records, leaving a lot of unanswered questions. Like what? What became of all that wealth? And those missing soldiers? None of them were ever heard from again. Until three months ago, when that first soldier washed ashore on the beach. Now you know why I'm here. I'm interested in nailing Dominic, and I'd like you to help me. How? I'll give you a number. If you get close, you call me, and we'll be there to help you. And believe me, you're gonna need it. Uh, one thing more. Uh-huh. I know Woodstock. Until he confides in you a lot more than he has, don't trust him to include you in at the finish. Now, if he comes here, that was the concession. I'd meet him halfway. He didn't make an option. It's imperative. Well, pay him more. You can buy anything. All right. We'll go after dark. Will he at least extend his office hours? I'm sure he will. Flynn jumped to his feet, grateful to see that his beautiful companion was safe. You know, I hate to see you going at this pace. You're going to burn yourself out. I take it you've lost her. Are you sitting on a hot lead? If I'd left, you wouldn't know how to find me, would you? And I wouldn't know what was happening, now would I? Let's just hope Mrs. Holden's not already dead. I'll call you if I get lucky. Hey, now wait a minute. Where are you going? To play a long shot, which is the only one that I've got. Just stay here. Why? Because you live here. I'm coming with you. Trust me, you definitely do not want to go to this place. Flynn fought to persuade his sensual companion to go with him. He needed her desperately. She knew it, too. If there was one place on the entire planet that any sane person would avoid, you could count on Flynn to make it his hangout. Flynn strode through the smoke-filled club with the lithe young beauty at his side. Every eye in the room was riveted on her. Why would you want to come back here? Because they're here. They're the only lead we've got to dominate. The Colonel gave you a direct order. What do you mean, order? It's not 71. It's not Saigon. I run my own show around here. We're coming this way. Quick, kiss me. And you can all that for me. I'm telling you, they're threatening me now. I want some protection. I'm not paying you guys off just to do nothing. What do you mean, imagining things? I'll tell you, I know these guys. Yeah, they're supposed to be dead. Look, I want somebody in my house tonight, or else. Who the hell are you? Somebody who can give you some help. I don't talk to strangers. Walk out of here, or I'll call the police. Call them. I said, who are you? Writers. Really? Nothing more. You know about your buddies washing up on the island? These guys showing up? You must be getting nervous. Look, if it's gonna be you out on the beach tomorrow, you could 
save us a lot of research if you talk to us now. You sure got a funny sense of humor. She might be saving your life. Right. What those guys want? They're working for a colonel I knew in Nam. He's putting back together the team that ran the clubs. Now they're back looking for action in my backyard. They want some kind of answer tonight, right? They wanted me to come to some private island for a party. Where? I don't know. Could care less. You turned them down? Look, the colonel was a joke then, and he's a joke now. I might have been afraid of Dominic, but not his puppet. <laughs> like newlyweds, waiting for the moon to rise and night to fall. It began to dawn on Flynn that something must be wrong. Isn't there some time limit on one of those things? to keep it from his companion as long as possible. A showdown was imminent, and it was going to take place on the infamous Hillshire coast, the most remote point in Kingston, Jamaica. The reason it was chosen at the turn of the century as a leper colony. I want you to come with me, Doc. I have too many other patients to serve. I'll pay you any amount of money. The money won't help. The disease is in remission, but the reconstructive work will take time. There's no way to rush it. I can't afford the possibility that I can't get to you when I need you. Look, in one month, we'll talk. Same time, same place. Oh, you're coming with me tonight. Yeah. There's a car. You've got to be here. I'm getting close. The village had barely acknowledged the 20th century. Its lonely isolation had been deliberate. Sheer cliffs on two sides, the ocean on the third, and only one road in and out. Flynn's mind could find no logical explanation for a group of fugitives to corner themselves in a geographical trap. The first time Flynn had shared a warm bath with someone he loved, somehow this time it was different. The story had moved into a new chapter, 
The remaining death squads of the Warlord of Waipai have returned from hell. Now they were going back. One thing Flynn knew for certain, the battle could not be fought here. It would have to be taken to the enemy in his own camp, where he would least expect it. Fulton, it's Terry. Terry, are you all right? You haven't called. Where are you? Uh, well, it's kind of a, a small, out-of-the-way colony. Well, I was in hopes you'd be on your way back by now. I've definitely set up a barbecue for Sunday, and uh, I've invited a few friends over. Oh, that's fine, Fulton. Uh, I was calling you to tell you not to count on me. Mr. Raymond's haunting me at every second. In fact, we just had a major blow-up here. Terry, you don't have to take this. Yes, I do, Fulton. I'm learning a lot. Now, I need you to run a check for me on some private islands in helicopter range of Kingston. What's this for? Well, it's for Mr. Raymond, of course. Well, I know that, but what's the significance of this island? Look, I haven't got time to go into it now. I've got to go. I'll call you in a couple of hours. Just have the information. Terry. Terry. And cut off again. Hello. We found him. They found him. He's moving. We're going after him. How? Woodstock's boat. You told him about me? Uh, not yet. Don't say anything to Beanie about us. We'll be there when you need us. How will you find us? What are you talking about? You're dealing with the United States Army. Just don't lose him! Good luck. Anything wrong? <laughs> no. Any difficulty, sir? Nope. No problems at all. All preparations have been made for receiving guests. Good. Excellent. for what seemed like hours. Flynn stood at the helm, his eyes undressing the darkness before him, never relaxing his protective vigil. He nevertheless turned now and again to cast a longing eye at his beautiful, alluring, seductive companion. Oh, well, he looked over at his companion. Are you awake? Uh-huh. How do you know? I can hear the wheels turning. How's the book coming? You think I'll ever get back to New York with my research? Well, the way things look, probably not. I know about your brother. Who have you been talking to? No one deserving that kind of alarm. Just my boss. He dug out what little there was about why you spun off like a lost planet. It happened when you got the wire that your brother was missing in action. Why won't you talk about it? I raised Tugger for the most part, by myself. Our parents were killed before he was six years old. So we grew up together, and he was always hanging around, tugging on my sleeve. That's how he got his nickname. I loved him. You think he's out there, don't you? I know he's out there. Colonel, we've had a boat on radar for some time. How fast? Eight knots. But there's something more troublesome. The boat is being tracked by an aircraft. All right, treat the boat as a hostile target. 
Drill procedure, condition war, keep me apprised of the aircraft. Yes, sir. I detect high speed targets down below three of them. Moving out from the island. Lieutenant, we found him! The boats are tracking the fishing trawler. They're turning towards it. Watch it! What is it? I don't know. But it's louder and it's powerful. And it's coming at us. Put this on. Cut them in half. They're on their own. They deserve it. Turn around. We'll go back for reinforcements. take them all, but he could damn well keep it from being too zipped. The gun was tucked neatly into the back of his pants. What are you talking about? I don't have a gun tucked neatly in the back of my pants. It was just a thought. Grab on to it, folks. We'll pull you to the back of the boat where we have a boarding ladder. Well, after last night, I'd prefer anything to drowning. It didn't seem as if you had your running lights on. I can't tell you how sorry we are about your boat. It was a priceless antique. I hope you have insurance. The business problems we can handle later. Right now, we want to get you ashore and to a doctor to make sure you're all right. Please make yourself comfortable. It'll be about half an hour before we're in port. He didn't have to come back for us. He could have let us drown. The running lights were out on purpose. And they did seem very apologetic. Coffee's great. So, what do you think? I think we're in deep trouble. Club, he meant club. Club Domino. Can't be. What can't be? He had a big NCO club in Nam, one that was destroyed. Follow me. Sorry we don't have more choices, but I'm sure something here will do for the party. Party? Oh, the Colonel thought that as long as you were here, you might as well join the rest of the guests. Who are the rest of the guests? I'm afraid I can't answer that, but you'll meet them all. There's an open bar downstairs, and feel free to wander around after you've changed. Until dinner, which is served promptly at 1800 hours. Soldier. Technically, we're all considered civilians here, sir. However your staff is organized, by any chance, would you know someone by the name of James L. Woodstock might be known as Tugger? I can check around, sir. I'd appreciate it. He's my brother. I haven't seen him for a long time. Was that me? Probably not. I couldn't help it. 
seem to have more focus than the rest of them. Plus, he had wings on his uniform. Tugger was a chopper pilot? Yes. If they need to keep anybody straight around here, it'd be their pilots. And they'd know each other. Ah, oh, you did the right thing. He definitely reacted to the name. I hope I haven't gotten us into something we're not going to be able to get out of. Oh, I've been in a few tight places before. Why do you do it? Why do you go all around the world taking all the risk while Raymond gets all the credit? He's a very generous man. Well, I hope so. If you think getting in here was hard, getting out might be next to impossible. Not if we find your brother. Dinner will begin promptly in 15 minutes. I think we better be careful about what we say in all of these rooms. Should make changing clothes very interesting. A soldier as old as he is should be at least a sergeant. It's as though everybody's been frozen in rank for the last 10 years. Attention, guests of Colonel Harper are requested to be in the main showroom. All guests to the main showroom, please. Is that an invitation for us? Funny. To me, it's sounding more like a warning. these other guests. Do you recognize any of them? Perhaps I could be of some help. I'm Colonel Harper, base commander. You're Terry McLean, and you're Lady Woodstock. I certainly have us at a disadvantage. Uh, you're asking about guests. Some of them are very old friends of ours. Some are new ones. People we hope to include in our new operations from this base. What kind of a base is this? This is headquarters for the Domino Corporation out of Hong Kong. It's very military. Well, it should be. It started as a small investment group in Vietnam. Poor soldiers pooling their assets. Grew into a major Hong Kong corporation. Finally, this. What exactly is this? Well, eventually it's going to be a large private resort. Right now we just have a foothold. Like most corporations based in Hong Kong, we're moving out. Have a good time tonight and enjoy the show. Thank you. Uh, may I ask one question? Sure. Uh, how did you know our names? Well, we checked the identification on your wet clothes. All visitors have to be reported to Jamaican immigration. Sure. Enjoy. Thanks again. What do you suppose you meant by show? I was afraid to ask. More than half, including most of the independents. The main holdout now is Mr. Danton, who seems to feel his connections in Chicago give him some kind of immunity to our threats. <laughs> well, you arrange it so that all the holdouts are on a special boat going back rather than the choppers. <laughs> you understand? I read you loud and clear, Sergeant. Let's start the show. <laughs> I know these guys are trying to relive the great days of the war, but they wouldn't want to blow us off. Would they? Come on, hurry up! Oh, he can't be that crazy! He's got too many of his own guards in here to do something too crazy. Get rid of someone! Get it to us! I'm getting out of here! Ladies and gentlemen, the good old days. Enjoy the show. Thank you. 
showman. Maybe sick. But he's an interesting showman. He's a maniac. I'm still getting out of here. Now would be a good time for us to step out and take a look around. If Mrs. Holden is here, we have to start locating her. Follow me. Mr. Woodstock? Hi. We've seen the picture. The Colonel would like to meet with you in his office. Great. There are a few things I'd like to talk about. The meeting is with Mr. Woodstock. We go together or not at all. Follow me. <clears throat> Damn, why did I do that? That's a good question. Who goes to get help if we both don't go? That is untrue. You told Miss McLean you were coming here because she accompanied you. Punish him, Sergeant. boat has been reported approaching the island. Alert the Coastal Patrol. I look like a fool in that department back in Washington, chasing after a corpse who lived like a king. Tonight, have your revenge. Do you think it's who I think it is, Sergeant? Do you have any doubts? After all these years, he still hasn't given up. He's the one that chased us away from what was ours. Yeah, well, we got away clean. And we couldn't come home. Once he's gone, that's over. I want him to suffer. I want him to die slow. What about the rest of the poor zombies that are still with him? They're on their own. After all, we're here for the money. through what you just did. You won't have to. You don't know anything that could hurt them. Maybe I do. Well, just don't say anything. You've got to get out of here. Tugger, I've been looking all over for you. I gotta see you in the comm room right away. The old man wants us air ready. Tugger, your brother's here. I think you better come and take a look. Come on. What do you want to do with the three civilians? Well, any possible threat is over. So why don't you see to it that they die at the hands of our invaders? They sat in the cage like two trapped animals. Suddenly, as if driven by an extraterrestrial force, Flynn sat bolt upright. <clears throat> his face alive with a plan of action. What was that about? I'm sorry, but you were asleep. I'll never. Close my eyes again. I know what Flynn would do. What Flynn would do about what? About finding a kid brother he'd been searching for for over 10 years. You've got to help me figure out.
Doctor, I have good news for you. Sending me home. I'm letting you live. Now go get the things you'll need to take with us on a little trip. It's no good. Even if I could break it, they're probably watching us. He'll be down here in a minute. This used to belong to my grandmother. Use it to cut the glass. They're going to be here with their torture kit. They're not going to like it. Grab whatever weapon he's carrying. Got it. Do you by any chance know how this turns out? Huh? Oh, I haven't read that far yet. Get out of here without We'll him. never get out of here with him. He's as bad as Dominic. The only difference is he hides behind a badge. That's why the military fired him. It's why he's gonna have to kill us all. So there won't be any witnesses. How could you have told him that? Because you didn't confide in me like you promised. Now we've got two armies to fight off. Let's go. Go where? Just follow me. confined to the main theater. Well, then we better get going. Anyone attempting to escape from the main theater is to be shot on sight. No, hold on a minute. We weren't attempting to leave. You can check. We have to get to our battle stations. Shoot them. No! There's been a mistake. You're out of your jurisdiction here, Tucker. My orders are to place these people aboard Sergeant Dominic's personal bird. You wish to countermand those orders? Just don't go off and get lost. 
We gotta get out of here. What's going on? The entire place is mined. Detonators will be triggered when white people get inside. He's gonna pull off exactly the same stunt as he did before, when he disappeared in Nam. Can we stop it? We have friends. A lot of the guys wanted to escape, but never could. They'll help us. Go tell them. Help us find out where Miss Holden is. Detention. I can get her. Where are we gonna meet him? The flight pad on top of the building. That's where the sergeant was heading. We have two ships ready to go. I have a key to Dominic's escape pad. The only access is from his control room where the detonators are. I You've waited too long. I'm going in. Must get past Dominic's personal guard. Let's go. I'll set the detonators. Set them for two minutes. Two minutes it is. That's cutting it pretty close.
I got you, Dominic. I finally tracked you down. You didn't get me, White. The girl got me. The girl and that reporter. show that the warlord of Waipai died in 1973. Flynn knew the truth. Sergeant Dominic had faked his death in order to mastermind another 10 years of terror and crime. It's over, Flynn. You did it. You call me Flynn? Did I? of Chateau Lafitte Rothschild 66 place on board the plane. I did. Thank you. Will you be sharing it with anyone? You never know. <laughs> it was the job of a good researcher to gather enough information and color about the people and places she visited that an author could simply sit down and read the notes, then write a story as if he'd been there himself. I had learned to go that formula one better. I had eliminated the author. There was no Daryl F. Raymond. It was my own pseudonym. And I had very good reasons for using it rather than my own name. It was surprising what people would tell an ordinary working girl that they wouldn't dream of telling a world-famous author. The name Terry McLean was a passport to truth rather than fame. In the end, I knew I'd have both. Thank you. You really think Mr. Raymond will be pleased? Pleased? I bet you get a call. Raymond, call me personally. Mm -hmm. That'll be the day. I don't know what it is he has against people who work in civilized surroundings. You really think you want to change his lifestyle? I mean, I can just see his next novel, Curse of the Coffee Break, or Bad Day at the Barbecue. Make fun of my little Sunday soirees, but at least I don't live life vicariously. I don't suppose you'd consider a little after-hours madness. What do you consider madness? Dinner and a movie. This is a work night. I want to get kind of late. Oh, come on. Let yourself go once in a while. You can't spend your whole life watching other people live. There was a passage in Flynn's new novel that said it perfectly. Something about life being a... A wild stallion, bred to breathe the fire of the gallop, the wind rushing through its mane, the earth racing up challenge its pounding hooves. A race to be won, not watched. Gee, you know, word for word. Oh, it's my favorite passage, too, Fulton. And I think... You're right. I'll see you to dinner in a movie. You mean it? Sure I do. Really? Well, like you said, a woman really ought to make room in her life for a little excitement. <laughs> Saturday at 1 o'clock, see the world's number one, Stefan Edberg, battle against Lendl, Agassi, Chang and Sampras for over $6 million in prize money and the title Champion of Champions, as Seven Sport takes you to the Grand Slam Cup, starting Saturday at 1, continuing Sunday at noon and concluding Monday night at 9.30. Right now, courtroom drama with Perry Mason.